Okay, I'm going to make some statements this morning, and I want you to respond with what you think is the right answer. Okay, it's that simple. I want to hear some feedback here. So, you ready? Uh oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see how well you can do. Here are some slogans. Can you name the product? It's finger licking good. You're, you're right. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there is. MasterCard. And the quicker picker upper. <laughs> Bounty paper towel. Okay, that's pretty good. They're doing good marketing. You got that. Okay, any idea what Baby Center's top boy and girl names were for 2019? Okay, the first place name for boys this year, any guesses? Well, let's see. What is it, Joel? Liam. Okay, and top girl's name for 2019 goes to? Let's see it. Sophia. That's what they say. Okay, I was curious to see where my name ranked this past year. And nowhere have I seen the name Betty rank anywhere near the top 20 names for the year. But just in case you're wondering, from 1929 to 1934, Betty did make the top three names. That was a little while ago, something like the Leafs, right? It was a while ago, but we're going to hold on to that. Okay. Okay, you identify objects by their names. Okay, there's the pew, there's the doors, there's bounty paper towel, and you know a song by its name. You probably can sing a tune when I say the name of this song, Amazing Grace. Or one of the favorites around here, and we sang it this morning, Waymaker. You refer to an individual by their name. My name is Betty. My husband is Kevin. And according to Baby Center, you're going to be meeting a lot of Sophias in the next few years. Okay. In the same way, we can identify God by his name. We know his character by his name. Now, we've looked at some of the names of God over the last number of weeks. And we know that God is everlasting by his name, Jehovah Elohim, the everlasting one the eternal, his perspective is eternal. We know God is the healer because of his name, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And today, we're going to encounter Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now to understand this name for God more fully, we need to go back to the story where we first hear this name for him. Now it's not a a new story to most people, and it's a story of Abraham where he received instructions from God to take Isaac, his only son, and sacrifice him on a mountain that God would show him. At the last moment when Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son, God stops him. Abraham sees a ram caught in some thorny bushes, he sacrificed it, and he called the place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now the word used here in Hebrew is richer than the English word. Provide in Hebrew is see to it. It also means perceive and experience. So when Abraham calls God Jehovah Jireh, he isn't just saying God found a provision. He is saying, you see my need and make provision for it. It becomes much more personal, don't you think? So if you came here this morning with something that's weighing heavy on you, with needs that overwhelm you, or a lack in some area of your life, my prayer for you this morning is for your ears and your heart and your spirit to be open to Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. The one who sees all your needs, he perceives them and he makes provision. Now, God's word is where we encounter him. If you ever want to know where to, how do you hear from God? 
That's where you find God. It's his word. So that's where you encounter him, and he speaks wisdom, and he speaks direction there. And that's where we're going to go this morning to get some answers. So I want you all to stand, please. We're going to pray, and then together we're going to read God's word from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Okay. Lord, your word is life. It's truth. Your word is eternal. It's here in your word that we can hear your spirit speaking to our hearts, to our circumstances. Please, Lord, reveal your name, your nature, Jehovah Jireh, as we read your word this morning. Amen. Okay, let's all read together. It's on the screen if you uh, don't have your Bible with you. Everyone together, starting at verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. You may be seated. You can find many stories of God's provision starting in Genesis right through Revelation. Now, you may not find the words Jehovah Jireh in their stories, but the character of Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees all my needs, is constant. Jehovah Jireh provides a partner for Adam. He provides direction to Abraham's servant to find a wife for Isaac. Jehovah Jireh provides food for Elijah during a, a drought by way of a raven every morning and every night bringing food. He provides direction and strategy over and over again to leaders as they prepare for battle. There are the stories of Joshua, Gideon, King David, one of my favorites, King Jehoshaphat. And they're all incredible stories, but these barely scratch the surface. There are provisions for healings and forgiveness. Jehovah Jireh comes through when there's a shortage of drink at a wedding, food in the desert and on a hillside. From cover to cover, you see Jehovah Jireh. Now, of course we would, because that's his character. That's who God is. Now, there's so many stories that I could have used, but chose to unpack the story that we just read this morning of Bartimaeus, and we're going to see how this story points us in the direction of God's provision. So first, we need to perceive our need. Okay, so Jesus is leaving Jericho with his disciples, and... A, huge, a large crowd of people, and sitting by the roadside begging is Bartimaeus. And when he learns that it's Jesus passing through, he cries out for mercy. Okay, now, just picture this. Put yourself in, in this scene here. So Jesus has just been in Jericho, and he's heading out now with his disciples, and it's no wonder that a huge crowd of people are tagging along, and I'm sure that there's conversation still happening, and there's laughing going on, and there's Bartimaeus sitting, and, and for sure some people brush past them as they're going to get closer to Jesus, and he's straining his ears, listening to all this ruckus, trying to hear here, what's going on? He asks and he learns that it's Jesus that's passing by and he cries out for mercy. He's, he obviously perceives his need, otherwise he wouldn't call out to Jesus. Now, how often have you seen people in situations that are blinded by their own need? It's obvious to you when you think, 
oh my goodness, don't they see that if they keep going this direction, this is not going to end well. It's easy for us to name physical and material needs, but we often miss other needs in our lives. We are made up of a body, a soul, and a spirit, and each part of our being needs help. You will come to the end of your own resources eventually, if you haven't already. We need to come to that place to realize that we need help. Now, you can put a thousand names to those needs from physical, relational, financial, emotional, spiritual. You probably can add a few other categories in there. And they vary from person to person. But unaware of what we need, we are just as blind as Bartimaeus pre-Jesus encounter. And we are going to stumble from situation to situation, friend to friend, payday to payday, one disastrous decision to another. It's not until we perceive our need for Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides, that we will even take that next step. You're going to be caught in that cycle over and over again until you know you have a need. Okay, I reluctantly look into the mirror and I see signs of aging. I've got some wrinkles happening, you know, around the eyes and now around my mouth. Um, I've got some saggy skin happening right over here. Some of you should be saying amen along with me, right? Like, I'm not the only one, right? Some saggy skin and some white hairs, and I can't lose weight as quick as I used to when I was younger. I'm not as youthful looking. I compare pictures, I have to thank Facebook for this, from just a few years ago till now, and I see a difference. Now, there is one very natural thing that takes place as you age. You know that skin under here? You got that happening? I notice that when I'm worshiping God sometimes. It's just kind of just (laughs) flab in there, you know? And you know the skin, you know, it's getting a little flabby in the hips and in in the legs. You know, this is called a loss of muscle mass. And I had no idea that muscle mass was a key player in movement. Now, I should have clued in because my one son is a a trainer, and I did not know that. And a loss of muscle mass can cause weakness, and it increases your risk of falling. Now, maybe you all knew that. Did you know that? No, I don't, yeah, well, I didn't know that. You might have known that. I did not perceive my need. And it's not until I perceived my need to rebuild the loss of muscle mass that I took steps to do something about it. So I'm happy to say that I have graduated from lifting a 10-pound bar to 55-pound bar now. Thank you. I am doing 50 squats, and I'm up to 25 push-ups. So I'm working on rebuilding that muscle mass. Now, you might be sitting here today and you say, I'm good, I don't need anything. Well, a good place for you to start, if you don't see that you have a need, is to pray, Jehovah Jireh, please provide me with insight to perceive my needs, to see where I'm lacking. Okay, next, we need to profess our need. Okay, we've perceived our need. We know that we're lacking. We've put names to those needs. The finances are tough, there are strange relationships, we're at a fork in the road and we have a decision to make, don't know which way to go. And the thing is, knowing isn't enough. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about me. I need to have some self-control around chips. That is true. Chips are a problem for me. I love the saltiness, I love the crunch, I love the taste. I've been known to make potato chip sandwiches. Anyone else out there? You don't know what you're missing. That crunchy chip inside that soft bread, there's something about that that's really good. And you know Mike, our worship leader? He works at Old Dutch. You have any idea where I'm going with this? So he brings all kinds of chips into the office. 
So he's feeding into my addiction, and there's those kettle cooked chips and all those flavors, and I will make any excuse to go into the kitchen at work to get a handful of chips. And sometimes I don't even make an excuse. And I don't even take a handful of chips. I'm sorry for everyone in the office. I sometimes take the bag of chips. So if they're missing, I've got them. Okay, I know I need to get off my computer at least one hour before I go to bed at night if I want a good night's sleep, but I have to make it to that next level in my word search game. So one more, we'll bring it a little bit more spiritual here now. I know that I need I need quiet time first thing in the morning, but often I let the busyness override my time with God. Friends, that's my confession. We all need help. Being aware of our needs is not enough. We need to profess those needs and profess them to the right person, the one who could do something about it. We talk about our needs to everyone and anyone who will listen to us often. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not undervaluing the support that you get from talking to a friend or reaching out to a counselor or a financial planner to a doctor. Yes, these are all important. But ultimately, our help comes from Jehovah Jireh. Yet often, he's the last one that we turn to. Back to Bartimaeus in verse 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He perceived he had a need, and he called out to Jesus. Now, it's interesting that in verse 51, Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Now, it's obvious to us that Bartimaeus would want his sight, he's blind. And I'm sure that those that were in earshot of that question might have been puzzled as well. But for whatever reason Jesus asked, we do know that he wanted Bartimaeus to verbalize his need. James says in James chapter 4, verse 2, you don't have because you don't ask. And we often don't ask specifically. Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do? I want to see. Now, Jesus gives us some specific instructions on how to pray. And it, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 9, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Hey, checkpoint. Do you pray specific prayers? Listen to these honest, specific prayers prayed by some kids. Dear God, I love Christmas and Easter. Could you please put another holiday in the middle? There's nothing good in there. <laughs> or... Dear God, could you please send Mikey Johnson to another summer camp this year? And some of you might relate to this one. Dear God, please change the taste of asparagus. It's really gross. Okay. These kids didn't have any trouble letting God know exactly what their need was. How specific are your prayers? You might pray something like, Lord, you know that I need money. Please provide it. Or more specifically... You can pray, Lord, you said that you would give us our daily bread. We're not making ends meet. We need money to pay our bills. We are often short to do groceries. My black shoes have worn out. I really, really need to replace them. Please provide what we need. Does God know what you need? Of course he does. There are times where we can't get the words out. There's an old song, and some of you might remember it, that says, tears are a language that God understands. Our provision isn't dependent on our words. And what a relief, I say amen to that one. When we can't pray, the Holy Spirit prays through us. There have been times where my whole prayer has consisted of one word, Jesus, over and over and over again. 
I can give a huge sigh when I read Romans 8, 26. And in the same way, by our faith, the Holy Spirit helps us with our daily problems and in our praying. For we don't know even how we should pray, what we should pray for, nor how to pray as we should, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with such feelings that it cannot be expressed in words. Now, with that being said, we are given instructions to pray specifically as well. Sometimes those words are silent tears, or as the scripture says, groanings that can't even be uttered, while other times they're detailed, dis descriptive prayers. Do you pray passively, or do you pray passionately? Mark 7.47 says, When he, Bartimaeus, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48 says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. He shouted, then he shouted all the more. Now that's passion, and that's what I can understand coming from an Italian uh, background heritage, that's no problem. May God give us a revelation of his name. God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. When we really believe that and can't be swayed from that truth, we can pray passionate prayers. They may not be loud, they may not exude with enthusiasm, but there is a conviction there. There's, they're not a fatalistic prayer like, well, I asked, if he wants to do it, he will. What's meant to be, will be. But when we know here that God is Jehovah Jireh, it doesn't matter how things look out here, we know that he will provide. It doesn't matter how we feel, we're confident that Jehovah Jireh will come through. It doesn't matter how long it takes, we can't be swayed. Jehovah Jireh will break through my need and he'll provide. Now that's passion. So we need to perceive our need, we need to profess our need, and next, we need to position ourselves for the provision. Now I got here, so tiny, I might not even find it. Oh, see, it's that tiny, I've even lost it. Okay, well, I had a tiny, tiny little seed. That's why I, it's probably there and I just don't see it. Okay, so God's provided for me. Oh, that's driving me nuts now. Like, where is it? I put it there. Oh, there it is. <sighs> that would drive me crazy. Okay, you can't even see it. So anyways, God has provided some good tasting, healthy food for me in this seed. Okay, his provision is right here in this tiny little seed. Now, there are some obstacles to me getting um, my provision if I don't position myself, okay? I will need to take some steps to get something from this. Now, no dirt is a huge obstacle. If I don't plant this in some dirt, I'm not getting that food that God has provided for me. A lack of water is an obstacle. If I don't water this, I'm not going to get anything. At our, at our house, we have a joke, though. Kevin always says plants need to learn to swim at our place because I tend to overwater them. But that could be a problem as well. That could be an obstacle. And weeds choking this seed as it's growing is an obstacle to it producing fruit and giving me the provision that's been promised to me. So to get fr fruit from this seed, I have to position myself. I have to work around those obstacles to get my provision. I need to find a patch of dirt and plant that seed. I need to be faithful to water it. And I need to get out there to pull some weeds to make sure it grows and gives me what my, the provision is. Just knowing that I can get food from this seed isn't enough. Now back to Bartimaeus, he had a few obstacles of his own to get to his provision, didn't he? He was blind. He had to find his way around a crowd of people to get to Jesus. He didn't have any support from others. In verse 48, it says many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. So he could have stepped back. He could have shut up. And we know that he was hindered by his clothing because in verse 50, it says, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. Nothing was going to trip him up. 
Same with us this morning, friends. We need to throw off some things, those obstacles that hinder us, and we need to come to Jesus. Maybe this morning you feel like you're lost in the crowd and Jesus doesn't even hear you. Maybe it's discouragement or those negative voices that are coming at you and they're all around you. You've got to throw off anything that's hindering you to getting to Jesus for your provision. You push past those obstacles, whatever they are, and you'll find yourself standing before Jesus. And I'm suggesting, as you're pushing your way through, talk to yourself and say, I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and powers. You'll see them on the, ver- on the script, on the, what is this again? The, the These things, the board, the screens. That's another sign of aging that I didn't want to admit. Okay, the screens, those are screens. Look on the screens and there's scriptures. You're actually speaking to yourself. Scriptures, I am complete in him who is ahead of all principalities and powers. I am far from oppression and fear does not come near me. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I have no lack, for my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches. I've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. You keep pushing through those obstacles with scriptures on your lips and praise in your heart, and you'll find yourself before Jesus. And he will look at you with compassion and love and reaching out to you, he's going to say, what do you want me to do? Recapping what we've looked at so far, we need to perceive our need, we need to profess our need, we need to position ourselves for the provision, and then we need to praise him for the provision. There's a very sad story that's recorded in the book of Luke, and I really find it hard to fathom what happens. And Pastor Jamie actually used the scripture last week as well in his message. And it's Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the borders between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. I find the next two verses... The saddest verses in this whole account here. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Now I said that I couldn't fathom that nine out of 10 lepers didn't go back to thank Jesus for their healing, but really, if we stop and think about it, are we any different? When we stop and think about everything God provides on a daily basis, and sometimes even a minute-to-minute basis, how do we respond? When we've made it through the day, when we felt we couldn't even get out of bed in the morning, does it even cross our mind at the end of the day to praise him for the provision of his strength? the finances that have come together, a good report from the doctor, wisdom in a circumstance, peace in the middle of a storm, comfort in grief, a new job, a friend when we were lonely. Do we carry on like those nine lepers? I want to be that one leper that comes back to Jehovah Jireh, my provider, and praise him for the provision. I want to be aware that I had a need, I was lacking, and my God, in his love for me, in his compassion, he provided. (laughs) 
If you're having trouble putting words to your praise, the Bible is full of praise. Make these words your own this morning. You want to praise them for good health? Go to Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know full well. You want to praise him for the strength that he gave you to face the situation, to tackle that problem, to overcome that addiction? Go to Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and, my, and with my song, I praise him. You've been delivered from a fear that grips you, a fear that paralyzes you. Oh, I know what it is. I've been there myself. Read Psalm 56, verse 4. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, and I am not afraid. We need to pause long enough to praise. We need to practice praise. And we need to pass on the blessing of the provision. That's our last point this morning. I love stories of paying it forward. They remind me that people are still kind and people can be generous, and it gives me hope in humanity. I really am an optimist at heart. And this phrase became popular in the year 2000 with the release of the movie Pay It Forward. And it wasn't until um, some people grasped onto this idea, and they started paying for the per person next in line at Timmy's or McDonald's, that it, a new thing evolved, random acts of kindness. Now, while it's important to be thankful to people who helped us at certain points in our life and to pay it back, it's equally, if not more important, to pay it forward, to try to help people that you might not even know people, strangers, who are now in a situation that you have found yourself in. This is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves received from God. So when you come alongside someone who's struggling in the same way that you have, you can bless them with the same provision that God gave you. You can speak to their fears, you can speak to their pain, you can speak to their grief, their confusion. You fill in that blank where you have been and how God has provided for you. And you it comes natural. It's not work. You can say, I've been there. I know what you're feeling. And let me tell you how God has provided for me at those times. Now, you need to hear this incredible story about one of our missionaries that we support in an Asian country. And this past fall, God revealed to her that a storm was coming. And she saw this horizon spanning storm way out over the ocean and it was lightning and thundering and the clouds were rolling in inland and without knowing it she positioned herself for god's provision by increasingly leaning on him going deeper in her personal walk with jesus to understand his character now you've all probably heard about the coronavirus and how it's running rampant. Well, this was a storm that was revealed to this missionary months ago. And this is what she wrote to me. God's provision is his very presence. Those months leading up to this virus, I learned of God's love, his care, his heart, and this increased my confidence. There's some good preaching in that one sentence there. Let me just read that again. If you're going through something, this is how you can uh, begin to get that provision. I learned of God's love, his care, his heart, and this increased my confidence. Now, since then, she's passing on the blessing of God's provision, and that is his deep peace. 
She's doing this via social media to many people where she's living that are living in fear. So she perceived a need, although she didn't know what it was, she knew that something was coming. She professed her need as she prayed. She positioned herself for the provision, getting closer to God. She praised him for the provision, thanking him for his kindness. And she passed on the blessing of that provision as she spreads God's peace to others that are living in worry and fear. Isn't that good? Tomorrow is National Random Act of Kindness Day. And we really are blessed as a nation. We are blessed as a church. And we are blessed individuals. We have so much to thank Jehovah Jireh for. He has provided for us a way back to himself through Jesus, his son. He provides for us on a daily basis. I'm sure if we had the time, you could this morning even say on how God provided for you yesterday or even this morning. And he has provided a place for us to be with him forever in eternity. And we need to pass on these blessings, these provisions that have been given to us. Now, this morning at Faith, we're kicking off a Faith Well and Random Act of Kindness Week. And we're going to put some tools in your hands uh, so you can pass on the blessing to some others. So as you leave here this morning, in the foyer near the Connect Center, you'll see a table set up. And we want to make it really easy for you to kick off this Random Act of Kindness Week. So we've set up little stage, uh, little boxes with some cards in them. I call them punny cards. And some of these things on, some of these cards, there's some tea, and one of them says, have a terrific day. And some tea on there. I thought I would at least get an awe, or a, oh, that's cute, or whatever. <laughs> okay, if that didn't do it, how about this one? Have a super day. And there's some soup packages soon. Yeah, I thought so. And there's some others there as well. And we want to make it really easy for you. So go out there, take a package or two, and we want you to write a note on the back somewhere on it. There's some envelopes if you want, and spread them randomly to anyone. It could be literally anything, anyone that comes to your mind. Now, if you want to go a step further, we have some serve bags, and you, these should be familiar to you as well because we've used them before. We have some serve bags out there, and we've got the cards inside the bags. So what I want you to do is take those cards, randomly give them to people, but then the bag that you would fill it with something, some treats, some items, and bless someone that could use a pick-me-up or encourage someone. Anonymously drop it off at someone's doorstep. And should we run out of any of those things, uh, we do, I did make up a sheet with the different puns on there and they're easily duplicated. You can take them and duplicate it and there are tons of ideas on the internet as well. So does it make a difference? Does it really make a difference if you give someone a note or give someone a bag. If you've been a recipient, you probably would say amen to that, that it does make a difference. Now, someone was found out at Christmas when we did the Christmas doorstep challenge and they received this message. Here are parts of it. Did you leave groceries on my porch? It just about made me cry, but I didn't, not much. I don't know what to say. It's been a very lonely and it's been very lonely and miserable around here. I don't know. Well, let me try that again. I don't know what to say. It's been very lonely and miserable around here. I know that it was you. Thank you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea how much you lifted my spirits. No one else has been so kind and generous. You are one in a million. So there's your answer this morning. Does it make a difference when you give a card? Does it make a difference when you give a bag? Yes, it does. So wrapping it up, we talked about five things this morning that will take you from your need to passing on the blessing to others. We need to perceive our need. 
We need to profess our need. Knowing our need isn't enough and we need to tell God specifically what that need is. We need to position ourselves for the provision. We're going to push past those obstacles with scriptures on our lips and then we're going to praise him for the provision. We're going to be that one leper remembering what God has provided and praise him for it. And lastly, we're going to pass on the blessing of the provision. We don't know more of Bartimaeus' story. I wish I could tag along for a little while and hear what was going on, what was said. His encounter with Jesus ends in verse 52. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This morning we are figuratively standing alongside the road as Jesus is passing by. Where do you find yourself on that path? Do you perceive your need and need to profess it to him? Are there things hindering you and you need to position yourself for God's provision? Maybe you've received your provision and you want to praise him for it. Possibly God's been speaking to you to pass on the blessing of his provision to others. Passing on that blessing can take on many forms. It can be your time, some of your resources, your encouragement, your prayers. Let's turn our attention to God this morning as Terry leads us one last time in worship as we look to God. Present your needs to Jehovah Jireh. Push past those obstacles, those barriers, and praise Jehovah Jireh. So let's all stand this morning. I'm just going to pray, and then we are going to sing this song as you sing it. Make the words your prayer, and look to Jehovah Jireh. Lord, this morning, we are reminded, Father, that you are the provider. You see all things. And Father God, we want to position ourselves for the provision that you've given us, Father. We know that we are lacking, Father. And we look to you, Father God, the one that knows us best. And Father, for some, they may not even have come into their provision yet, but in an act of faith, we worship. They worship this morning knowing that the answer's coming. It doesn't matter how long it's delayed because we are established in Christ. We are established in Jehovah Jireh that God will provide. So Father, we look to you this morning in Jesus' name. Let's sing together. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Just what to do 